I noticed that a lot of spiritual people, they go into business and somehow they toss their spirituality out the window, especially when it comes to marketing and selling. And it really baffles me. It's like they have such spiritual convictions. They have such deep values that they champion in their spiritual growth or personal development. And yet, when it comes to getting clients and doing marketing, they stop trusting themselves and they trust the marketers who say, you've got to use a sales funnel. You've got to uh, be really clever and tricky in your marketing. You've got to do things that make you feel a little bit off. Like, and, and, and of course you end up buying from those people because those people are experts at getting you not to trust yourself and only trust them. It's like, no, this is what works. This is what works in your marketing. You have to do this. If you don't want to be poor, you have to do this. If you want to get clients, you have to do it this way. No, you don't. It's all BS. The only thing you have to do, I'll tell you what I, what I think is needed to be done. If you show up with a pure intention to serve and you offer something that they want, which is, by the way, where market research comes in. Market research just sounds so complicated. It's very simple. You talk to enough people one-to-one -to, -one, to find out what they are buying related to what you offer and to find out what they're looking for, even remotely related to the thing you offer. What are they looking for? What product or service might really help them? You, you work with them to design something. You know, um, start with your friends to say, hey, can help me design something that people would, uh, they would really want this, right? So many of us are like designing our coaching offer by ourselves or with a business coach, you know, and, and, and then we like try to push it onto other people. No, no, no. You should be designing your offers, your, your coaching service, your healing modality, your, your, your package, your subscription, your event, your workshop. You should be designing that stuff in collaboration with as many people as you can who might possibly be one of your ideal clients or participants. So if you show up with that pure intention of service to say, I want to offer what really is going to be sought after by the people, then I don't have to use tricky marketing. I don't have to use any shenanigans and manipulative things. I just offer what they want. And of course, they're going to say yes. If I offered you what you want, of course you're going to say yes. You know, at a at a price that you think is a good deal, you're going to say yes. And I'm going to have to change the price in a way that I can offer you something at a you know the price obviously has to match with how much energy and time I'm spending. I had to design it with you to say, okay, you want you want to pay that? Okay, that means I can offer you this. How does that work? You know. And so if you show up in your marketing with the pure intention to serve. Your offers are going to be what they want, number one. Number two, in terms of your reach, right, your content is going to be one where you are here to serve and uplift rather than to sell. This is why people like, oh, creating content, oh, so much of a chore, oh, I can't show up consistently. Why? Why can't you show up? If, you, if I ask you to show up consistently to care for other people, which you already do, but I, I, I am asking you to show up consistently to care for other people and to care for your own growth. Would, will you do that? Oh, that's what content is? Yeah. I'm showing up consistently because I'm trying to care for you and I'm also caring for my own growth. I'm trying to explore what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out right now as I'm on this Instagram live, <laughs> trying to figure out what I'm going to say. It's an exploration. So some of you are too shy to do live videos, trying to figure, but you could do that in writing. You're just exploring what your thoughts are in writing in hopes that it will also serve somebody else. And with that kind of pure intention, because I know you are eager for personal development, personal growth, spiritual, you know, um, progress. You, you are eager for that. So just do that publicly. Just explore your ideas publicly in writing or on video or on a podcast in a way that you also have this dual purpose of serving humanity. If someone might be served by it, wonderful. At least you are exploring your thoughts. So if you do marketing from this pure standpoint, 
you don't have to stop worrying about sales funnels or, you know, you got to have like really cleverly copywritten sales pages that make people want to buy or sign up BS to me. I mean, you're sure that stuff works, but it just takes the purity out of, it's like you're tossing your spirituality out the window. No, you could, you could be a fully spiritual being in your market. You're just caring for people. You're exploring yourself. That's what mar that's what spiritual or authentic marketing is. It's this combination of self exploration along with outer service. Inner exploration plus outer service equals authentic or spiritual marketing. And if you, you can show up for that consistently. I believe you can. I, I believe you would want to. So this is how, as you keep doing this, keep doing this. Of course, people are going to start noticing you benefiting from what you share. Some of them will. And then over time, they will benefit so much from what you share. And, and you'll talk with enough people about your offers that people will start buying from you or continue buying from or buy even more or tell other people about you. So I hope this is helpful. And uh, as always, I'm open to your comments and questions below. Thanks for joining me.